tired of those boring dime a dozen sports shows? Well, you're in luck as the Sportaholic Radio Show has you covered. Get ready for an informative and never boring entertaining sports show with a hip hop twist. From the NFL, NBA, MLB, college athletics, and everything in between, the Sportaholic Radio Show brings it to you in only the way they can. So tune in and turn up for the Sportaholic Radio Show. Let's jump into the NFL. The biggest story of the day that's going on right now is actually the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans are now up to nine players who have tested positive. Not, excuse me, not nine players, but nine players and also coaching staff that have tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, the news comes about after um, pretty much the, the Titans pulled out a crazy victory over the Minnesota Vikings, a last minute type of game. So looking at this whole thing, the whole thing is in jeopardy, not as far as the Titans. Like they, they may not be able to play this weekend, they can't practice because they're shutting it down to at least Saturday. Uh, the NFL is saying that if they have to, they're going to try their best to put the game in on Sunday. If they have to, they'll go to Monday. They even go to Tuesday. But this is a big story because this is the first time this season that a team has had a COVID outbreak. And some kind of way it happens to be in Nashville here in the Tennessee Bell Titans. I don't know. So let's start there swiftly. What are your thoughts when you heard the news? And what's going to happen here? You know what? My first thought was going back to Saturday when I had heard a rumor that the defensive coordinator, Shane Bowen, wasn't on a trip to Minnesota. That, there's your hint number one. And I I, I kind of, my antenna went up and said, why is your defensive coordinator not at the game? And that's first things yeah. first. And I thought that has to be something unless it's, you know, specific family related. That's very odd that your defensive coordinator didn't show up for the game. Then obviously we hear a few days later that, all right, there has been an outbreak. Here's the bottom line. The NFL doesn't cancel games, period, point blank. They haven't done it since the strike in 87. They're going to find a way to play this game, even if the Titans don't practice at all, except for Saturday, a little walkthrough. Pittsburgh comes to town. They're playing uh, Sunday. If they have to move it to Monday or Tuesday, they'll do it. They just don't cancel games. And this is where the NFL gets in trouble. They think they're a little bit bigger than everything else. I mean, this is a global pandemic. It doesn't care about your schedule. But the NFL is going to try to play this game anyway. And, you know, competitive advantage be damned or not for Pittsburgh or the Titans. Yeah, I dig it. I like that, man. What's your say, Tom? I say um, <laughs> the NFL didn't prepare, man. It's, you got a non-bubble situation going on here for all your teams. I mean, they just ill-prepared for this type of situation. And it's coming back to hunt them. It's going to bite them. And I will hope, I'm hoping that it's not an outbreak further than where it's at now. I'm hoping that, you know, the rest of the teammates, the other teams can remain safe. Cause this, this is no joke, man. This pandemic taking people out, taking them out. And the NFL think is, think is nothing really. To me, they think it's nothing. They just, their plan, their plan for this was not thought out, thought out well. And I'm hoping that they get this um, this game rescheduled, maybe later in the season or something. You can't you can't send players out there without without practice. You know what I'm saying? It's just I don't think it's a good thing, a good idea. They're saying if they didn't play this game, that uh, that they can possibly rematch it, and you know, in the, in, in, the, in whatever the bye was for the Titans, I think, uh, or what the Steelers was. So uh, it's going to be hard. I don't, I don't know either way as far as like I said about the, the them not preparing for COVID, the only thing that I can say that they did responsibly is that they added more people to the roster. You can have more than the 90-man roster this season. 
And to me, that's, that signals that we don't care. We just using bodies. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm just gonna make sure that we got more guys on the roster. So when this does happen, because you know what's gonna happen, we gonna have a guy that you better step in. And, and the no practice part, that's bullshit. So you mean tell me still to have two, three days of practice. I don't have any practice. And if you seen that Titans game, you seen the tackle was an issue. It was a terrible issue in that game. That's why they couldn't score so much the bikes and, and the Titans have lost that game. So you don't get the practice time. And you have to slip there and play that game. It's not right. But let me throw it to Rico. What, what, what you think of Rico on this? Uh, it's kind of like Tony said and like you said as well. I don't think they prepared enough and it shows they kind of don't care. Um, like you said, I feel like that it was counterproductive to add more people to the roster seeing that it's a very infectious disease, but I get what you're saying again about how some people do get it. You have other people come in as backups, but I don't feel like what they've, um, they've done enough to basically separate. In my opinion, football, it honestly don't need, don't need to be played right now by any, by anybody. I Just agree be, with you. If we're taking it very seriously as it should be taken, Football is not a sport that needs to be played right now. Baseball, uh, basketball is kind of leaning towards not being able to be played. But football specifically, being the physical nature that football is, it doesn't need to be played right now. Uh, but you, y'all like know. like Timothy y'all said. Know the NFL is, though. They don't care about nothing but the money. But go ahead. Go ahead. Exactly. I mean, it out. They're going to keep that moving for sure. But. Yeah, basically just poor preparation, and they they just really don't care. If I was a player, I would be upset, to be honest. The, the problem is just a system that works for everybody. Yeah, the NFL was prepared, but that, those players, some of those, a, a lot of those guys not making those mega contracts, you know? So some of those guys really got to play because they they set their life up to the point where they can't be just like everybody else. They live in paycheck to paycheck. So it's, it, a lot of times it doesn't become about the superstars, the guys that's making the money, the high arc of, of any league, NFL, NBA, or anything. It becomes about those lower run guys. And I think in a situation like this is that the NFL has proven, we've all said this at this point, we've, I've watched NFL for a long time. And to Swifty's point, they haven't ever, for whatever reason it is, you know, stopped the game if they don't have to. And, and I think it's the, it's the grittiest of all the leagues um, they do some really hard things in NFL, and I think they get away with it a lot of times, so they're going to continue to do those type of things. So, how, how do you feel? I, I know none of us are really a Titans fan here, but how would you feel as a Titans? Your team is 3 0 for the first time in the uh, Y'all kind of hot. Steelers and Titans is kind of a rivalry, you know, from being here in Nashville. I know a lot of Titans fans can't stand the Steelers. So, it's like all your momentum just stops. Now, everybody got to stop practicing. You got you to gotta stop doing everything. And and the disease, I mean, the virus is here. Now, now what do you do? It's that Titans look. It's exactly that Titans look for you. I'll, dating back to the oil, something always happens. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is true. But, I mean, yeah, look, maybe we've been a little too harsh on the whole thing. Maybe this, this will just be a blip and everything will go off. But I, I find it hard to imagine that 32 other teams are going to be able to get this whole season in without something like this happening. What's right. that So, I want to touch. I want to touch on something you were saying earlier about something uh, about some players don't have the finances as the big time players have to um to just step away from the game. You know, during this COVID time. But the NBA, the, mm-hmm. the NFL players union, they've um they come to an agreement right to have a a, a COVID buyout for players that don't want to play. So if you're one of those players that don't make money, don't make a lot of money, and you're worried about your health, take the buyout for the season. You, I mean, you're not, you're not. Hopefully, you're not living above your means if you're not making that money, like the big time players. Oh, they are. They are. You know they are. But go ahead. But they, yeah, they got like I'm looking at it right here. They have a um, if you're a high risk candidate, you're getting like a three hundred fifty thousand dollars stipend. Um, during this COVID time, and if you just voluntarily um, opt out, you get one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in advance. So there, there was a way. There were ways around it for players who don't make a lot of money. Now, if you're making a lot of money, so you and you're living lavishly, that ain't that ain't a lot of money for you. 
Yeah, but t Tony, players play, man. And, and you, uh, I've been around enough players, at least around here in Middle Tennessee, Titans players. It, it, it's it's about getting the film. It's about getting closer to free agency. There's there's other setups, and I know, and because they're 23, 25, 24 year old dudes, they're thinking, man, this ain't gonna hit me the same way it's gonna hit somebody else. And and they're thinking, hey, I need this film. And hey, I'm gonna be a free agent in 2021, and I need some film out there, whether I'm a defensive lineman, uh, uh, a wide receiver, whatever. So I get what you're saying, Tony. It makes perfect sense. But again, these players, that mentality is like they gotta play. Players play. It's the same reason why in college football, these guys are playing for a scholarship and a couple of meals, and they're still out there risking it. So players play. Mm -hmm. College players though, they get an extra year of eligibility though because of this. So I wouldn't risk it if I were them. I wouldn't. You never know, man. I mean, I see both sides of it. You never know. If I'm hot at that time, and I know for a fact I was coming in and I'm feeling great and I was going to have a great season, I think a risky as a college player. You never know. Everybody's situation is different. So this whole thing, mm -hmm. to me, is just a, a tragedy that we got to be in these type of moments, man. Yeah, everybody's happy because of all sports are bad. We're watching baseball right now. We're watching basketball, NFL, UFC, everything is here. But I think sometimes we as fans take it for granted that, you know, a lot of guys are making these big personal decisions to entertain us. Because that's what the boys are after. This is all for the entertainment. And nobody's making, don't make this clear. Nobody's making anybody make the decision that you make. If you want to play like you said, Swifty, if you're a player and you're going to play regardless, then you make that decision. If you got a pre existing condition that's going to endanger you and your family, like you said, Tom, then don't play. But at the end of the day, you're making a monumental decision, as you can see, because this is going to happen again in the NFL. And this, the reason this is so important because you're going to see how the NFL handles this one when the next one happens. Because you're not in any bubble in the NFL. You're not in any enclosed space. So it's going to happen again. That's all I'm saying. Mark my words. I agree. I think it's going to happen a, a, quite a few times. It's just like, yeah. like Rico said, man, this is not the sport. You know, this, is, this is not the sport to be playing with with the pandemic, you know, so. And, and, and to, Tony, I want to make to your point, you're talking about being ill, about Rico too, it, he, both of y'all said it, being ill prepared, you, they had six months. Like, you know, for the NBA and some of the other, they kind of, in the NHL, of course, we finished last night, they kind of had to say, hey, we got to squeeze things together. We got to figure out a plan. We got to do all these different things. The NFL couldn't have necessarily ne been in a bubble, but they could have taken things from those other leagues that have done a better job of this. And it, don't look, it doesn't look like they did. Right. And that's the issue. That's the issue yeah. that I have with this. It doesn't look like they took the examples that they could from the NBA or yeah, the hockey and do that. That's what I meant yeah. by ill-prepared. They, did, they didn't take, like huh. you saw examples of how this could work with the NBA and even with hockey. But, yep. but the NFL didn't take those examples. They just like, we just won't have fans. That's it. They didn't do the, the whole, you know, was, process. It, it was blatant over the top. You know, you had guys saying that we're going to have Jerry Jones out there saying proudly proclaiming we're going to have about 25,000 down there in, uh, in the stadium. So we'll be just, you know, like that's again, somebody said that the NFL feels like they're bigger than any pandemic. They feel like they're bigger than anything. Like the show must go on at all times. So, of course, they didn't prepare because they didn't give a damn. So if you don't give a damn in the first place, why am I going to protect anything? These guys are going to play. We know we're going to have enough players to at least get a season out. I don't give a damn if we have some big-time guys. And most of the big-time guys are not going to act out anyway. So every time the situation, this is what we got. Um, like you said, Tom, I hope that this doesn't become a major outbreak. As you can see this picture behind me, uh, it looks like the Titans and the Vikings players got well acquainted. They were playing in the background, so that's a lot of guys touching. And you never know how these situations go. Hopefully, again, I want to be all gloom and doom. This is a one-time thing, and it doesn't happen again. But I, I seriously doubt that this is going to be the first time we hear about this this season. So let's jump into some stuff that's more interesting than the NFL. Let's talk about this past weekend. We three in the NFL. You saw Mahomes go and pretty much tear down the Ravens. I mean, it was one of those games where you look at the score, and it's a lot closer than what that game really felt like. Um, so... <sighs> Is, is it at this point where the Ravens, you know, for a fact, can't beat the Chiefs? Is, is it that much at, to that point when I start thinking about the Swifties? No, I'm not going to uh, – it's not that they can't beat the Chiefs. Is they've got to play call better. Look, the Ravens, as great as Lamar Jackson is, the Ravens, when they are at their best, is when they are running at you constantly and then setting up their pass. 
other teams like Kansas City can just pass to set up their run. How the Ravens have functioned the last couple of years with Lamar Jackson is running the ball down your throat, doing doing the option, do, doing rollouts, doing the different things in the run game, and then throwing the ball down the field. When they try to throw the down, a ball down the field first, they're not as successful. And it looks like the Ravens were trying to play a Chiefs game, uh, game last night, and that's not going to work. So the Ravens can beat the Chiefs. They have to have a, get a, a better game plan to do it. Up in that time, what you, what you, what you think? I, I, he hit on some great points as far as the Ravens offense stalling and uh, things like that. But I'm going to give credit to the, the Chiefs defense, which I wasn't expecting. You know, I thought the defense, the secondary did well. I thought the guys up front did, did well. I thought the Chiefs defense played better than I've seen them play in a long time. Um, and the Ravens were in striking distance. I think at the beginning of the fourth, they, they closed the lead to seven points. So they were in striking distance to turn the game around, but they um they they they, they couldn't they couldn't handle that defense for some reason. It was like what um what uh, Lamar Jackson he said the uh, the Chiefs were their kryptonite in his press conference at the end of the game. <laughs> he said they were their kryptonite, yeah. and he also said they took notes from the um, from the Titans defense. The Titans. They took yeah. notes from the Titans yeah. defense, so they they played them their style of play. So they're gonna have to figure that out. Because Lamar Jackson looks up, and I get I get credit to the Chiefs defense for that. You know what that means? That last that? statement, the the one I don't the kryptonite part. Eh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. But the part where he said that the Titans they took some pages from the Titans. That means that everybody in the league, which they probably already did. Don't get me wrong. You gotta have the personnel to build. But every team in the league right. is gonna look at their game film from the Titans and also the Chiefs victory. And they're going to try to apply those same type of things to Lamar Jackson. He struggled under the blitz. I don't know what it was, but every time I looked up, Frank Clark was in his face. Um, he was coming around the corner, and Lamar didn't have the blitz with him. That's no. a progression that he's got to learn. You know, that's something that he – that's the one last thing for him. He, he just – in that game, he kept on being deep passes, but he could have just put a little bit much more on, put a little bit more air on him. So he, he, he's got – that's the last level that he has to get to. And think about his position, but – Pat Mahomes about the same, you know, same age and things like that. And this guy is just that one guy. I'm better than everybody else, but Mahomes is just that one guy that I can't seem to get paid. I don't want to make that distinction because I think they will be able to beat them. I thought they would win this game, but has a cool year. What's your thoughts on that, Rico? Uh, I'm going to give credit to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I feel like he was making that uh, the Ravens secondary look silly out there. That was my second point, yeah. Yeah. yeah making them look silly out there. He's just special, man. It's just the, <laughs> the way he can just put the ball in the receiver's hand. I don't know. I don't think I ever seen anybody throw the ball like him, to be honest. It's like he found all the creases. He found exactly. all the creases. That zone just, bam, bam, you know? He's just like, just find the creases, put the ball right there, and the guys, you know, extend the plays, you know? His guys extend the plays. They had so much speed. I mean, he just found like, every crease. And that defense. Like also and, it was putting that pressure on Lamar. He did not know how to handle that. He did not hold yeah. up. Yeah. Last week, I was praising it, the, the Ravens' defense. This year, this week, man, they got exposed. <laughs> but it was a great quarterback. It was a great quarterback. I know this is every time with the Ravens. If you, if you find a way to be able to take away their run game, it's a problem. You know, I, I'm sorry. That's basically the game. If you can put away that run game early and not give them confidence that they're just going to run it all over you, and then you have to depend on Lamar to make deep shots, things like that, that's pretty much the game plan uh, against them right now. Lamar can change that. The coaching can change that. But, Swift, you tell my mom here, like, if you can stop the run game, get some pressure on Lamar, you got a good chance against those guys. Well, you got a great chance, but here's the thing. I think they stopped the run game really in the second quarter, and that's too early. Yeah, a team like the Chiefs can get up on you 14, 17 points, but if you're if you're the Ravens and you have a specific game plan, and it's very unique to almost anybody else in the league, you've got to stick with your game plan a, long, a lot longer than a uh, quarter and a half. They needed to continue to run the ball more. And the other thing about the Blitz and, and the KC's defense – what that tells me is also the Ravens wide receivers weren't very good last night. And I don't know how good they really are in general. Right. And that's going to be a problem for them in big games. Maybe not against, you know, Cincinnati, but against in big games, a, a team like the Chiefs, their wide receivers dropped a lot of balls and didn't get separation. 
So that's worrisome once they get in the January in the playoffs and they have to play the Chiefs again or they have to play the Titans again. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, think, I keep coming back to Lamar. It's going to be, it's going to fall on him. And to your point, so they don't have the best wide receivers. They got some fast guys, some shifty guys on their team, but they don't have a big name. That's going to be a problem as well. So, uh, you know, Lamar, he's, he, his expectation levels are so high now when he's winning the MVP that um, yeah. you really want you, everybody's throwing so much at him at one time. But this is a natural progression. Like y'all said, Mahomes is one of the greatest guys I've ever seen to do it at this young age. I mean, the guy, and, and to get paired with Andy Reid and the weapons that he has, it's not fair. I mean, you got Tyreek Hill <laughs> running four twos, four threes over there. You got Eric Fisher, the left tackle. You know, they, they're putting out plays like that. The left tackle is going touchdowns and the fullback. They're going shovel passes. You don't know what's coming at you. So it's, it's going to be hard to see Lamar be compared to Mahomes if their career keeps going because Mahomes says, I, I, I would say this, I've never seen, I, I don't know, did anybody see this coming out of him in college? I know he had a good no, one. And I knew I he, was, he was smart, but man, God, Tom, like, what is, this dude is the next level. Yeah, yeah. He's he's super impressive, man. I mean, the throws he, were, he was making, man, I was like, fuck, <laughs> who is this guy? It don't make no sense. It yeah. don't make no sense, man. So, I mean, if you're a Kansas City fan, be happy you got that guy. Hopefully, you locked him up for a long time. So, let's move on. We got to keep moving. Uh, let's go to, I guess we'll go to a game that I'm pretty sure Tony got a lot of uh, uh, importance in. We're going to talk about the Chicago Bears. And <laughs> my man, fourth quarter Mitch, getting up out of there. So, fourth quarter Mitch is giving up his spot to Nick Foles. Nick Foles, and again, well, and, and Atlanta Falcons, my God, how can you be a fan of the Atlanta Falcons? Stop doing it, Atlanta fans. Stop doing yourself like that. <laughs> That's not fair to you. Your life means more than to be an Atlanta Falcons fan. You can talk about the Cowboys, yeah, but we got championships. You can talk about a lot of teams, but the Atlanta Falcons ain't never did shit down on Clippers level. Anyway, let's start off with you, Tom. Let's go, go Chicago Bears. I had to do that. Let's go Chicago Bears. Nick Foles is your quarterback now. Tell me what's going on down there. Oh, we loving it, man. The Bears fans rallying around that shit. We wanted, most of us wanted Nick Foles when we signed him. We wanted Nick Foles to be the starter for the season, jump off. They had, they had my man, fourth quarter Mitch, on a short leash. They had him on a short leash. You know why I'm looking like this? I know why you're looking like this. Because game one of the season. Game one of the season, I called him fourth quarter Mitch. But, because he did his thing. He threw three <laughs> touchdowns in the fourth. He, I'm going to give him his props. But he wasn't my guy for the, mm-hmm. he wasn't my guy for the season, though. I wanted Nick Foles to be our guy. And uh, you saw the difference as soon as he got in the game. Nick Foles was making all the reads, man. He could see the field. He, he was talking to the players, you know, telling them, you know, making adjustments with them and things like that. You could just see the, 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 the guys was ready for it, you know. Mitch don't have that experience or that IQ to do those things, so... It was just, I don't even understand why it was a problem in the first place to make Nick Foles a starter. I mean, you already you already told uh, Mitch, we're not picking up your fifth, fifth year, you know? Yeah. I, I, I really think it was all on the GM telling Nagy, look, I drafted this guy. I We got to stick behind him for a little bit, you know? We can't we can't fold on him yet. It's, it wasn't Nagy's guy, though. So yeah. Nagy was like, hey, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm pulling the trigger when I get a chance to, though. And he did. Now, I'll give you credit for this time. You always said that Nick Foles can give you just a little bit, just just a consistent play, yeah, which man. I would be pretty good. So I'll give you that. Y'all feeling no, but it feels like a very soft three and I don't. That doesn't <laughs> feel like a strong three and oh. What do you think, man? Yeah, yeah, real soft. I mean, let's look at the three wins. <laughs> if DeAndre Swift, my my cousin from another cousin, doesn't drop that ball in week one, <laughs> right? They lose that game, and you you look at what happened last week. I look, the Bears are happy that they're three and zero, and they should be. And not all three and O's are equal at this point in the season. Like if Fact. you ask me, Kansas City's three and zero, Chicago's three and zero. There's a large difference mm. between those two. But hey man, the, don't be the best case scenario happened for the Bears. They got to see that Mitch Trubisky was still not the guy, but they won those games. Right. They didn't lose those games. <laughs> they were able to escape and win those games. So, yeah. 
in, in the NFC, the way that things are right now, can Chicago be a nine-win team, a ten-win team, and sneak in? Absolutely. So, but but is it a soft three and oh? Oh yeah, very much so. That was my concern Darling. too. That was my concern. I, I was worried that we were going to take some L's just to sit Mitch down. I didn't want us to take L's to sit him down. I wanted us to win, and without him, you know, him being back there. But we didn't take L's because of Timothy's uh, brother from another mother dropping that. <laughs> yeah, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> didn't take any L's. So I'll take the wins, and we can improve from there because we have a we have a quarterback that we can open the playbook up to now. We ain't got to be like limited in our playbook. We can actually turn the page. Let's go to page forty-seven and run this. You know. So, Rico, you play football. You play for some teams, and you know how it is when a team loses confidence in its leader and, and the guy that you're supposed to look up to is the, is yep. the guy on the team that's going to rally the troops and things like that. So, when you lose confidence in that guy and the backup becomes the guy, which, which, what do you think the feel is in the locker room? I mean, in this situation, uh, it's the difference between somebody who hasn't been there and somebody who's been there. That's pretty much it is. It's just that experience difference. Nick Foles just proved that he could be a little bit more consistent than Mitch. Um, that's all we need. Yeah, that's that's pretty much all you need. You need that guy <laughs> to be a leader. Uh, make them consistent throws, you know. Uh, Mitch just didn't have it. Shoot, he lost the sauce. <laughs> he lost the sauce. That's oh. the business. Oh. No, no, he never had the sauce. Let's let's be real. When did he have the sauce? Right. So if he, <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I'm gonna say. Y'all play for about Deshaun and Patrick Mahomes for Mitchell motherfucking Trubisky. Never forget that. Man, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna. I for one year in North Carolina, the sauce. He had right. to have the kind of sauce. That was just all potential. That was never anything proven that he had sauce. They're like he might have some in his back pocket, but it was never proven that he had sauce. We saw. Sauce from Watson in college. I'm like, oh, he got some sauce. That was my guy. That's the guy I wanted. But uh, yes, I mean, you're a bad fan. You just gotta be disgusted to see what Mahomes is doing. And <laughs> dude, well, I know it, it's nothing you can hey, do for the big guy. Out. Please. We, if we got a consistent quarterback and our defense shore up some things and stop the run because we get ran all over now. Eddie Go Eddie Goldman uh, decided to opt out because of the coronavirus. And teams are taking advantage of that. They're running on us. We got to figure that out. Um, that's, our, that's our weak point in our defense. Actually, our secondary on our defense is stronger than I expected. So if we can shorten that run run stop up with a consistent quarterback, oh, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Who y'all got next time? We got the Colts. Who y'all next opponent? The Colts. They got a good offensive line. Uh, okay. They got a good offensive line. Y'all might, y'all might be four. Oh, y'all might mess around See, and be four. That was four. my oh, – man. That was my – Preseason oh, prediction, we start off 4-0. And then after it that, the schedule. It is a soft charm and ultra rolls, one-side yeah. toilet paper oh. <laughs> from 4-0. It's going to be a soft 4-0 charm, okay? But it's going to be 4-0. That's all that matters. I'll take the wins. We ain't cheap. We won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 I say, yeah, you right, a dub is a dub. Yes, sir. Y'all got to respect that. Y'all got to respect that. Let's talk about the games coming up this weekend, man. We, we got to get into that. Uh, I was going to talk about Aaron Rodgers, man, but uh, I think the discussion is is that we know Aaron Rodgers has a lot to cook. We talked about him the last couple of weeks. So let's jump into some weekly picks, man. Now, let me look, take a look at the games. Now, Tom told me he couldn't find the two good games this whole weekend. Just so, two. That's two. And then my thing was, is one of them got taken away. The Titans and the Spencers in jeopardy now. We don't even right. know if they're going to play. Right. And so that makes for a hard week for big games. But uh, we'll, we'll try our best here. I'm going to go with the Pets and the Chiefs. We know that's going to be a good game. You mentioned probably the best coach, one of the best coaches of all time against one of the best quarterbacks. Of all time. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Pepper Holmes is one of the best quarterbacks of all time at this age of 24, 25 years old. Um, so we're matching Ooh. with the Andrew Lee and Bill Belichick. So let's, let's go to that game first. Tell me what you think, who's going to win the game, and tell me why. Let's, let's start with you, Rico. Sound like you have something to say now, man. I'm just saying for you to say that Patrick Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it, is early. 
He is one of the best young quarterbacks I've ever seen throw the football, though. But be one of the best I'm ever. Coming. Already, I'm calling it. He's got an MVP and a Super Bowl ring earlier than anybody. He's only getting better. But I'm, go ahead, we go. Go ahead. What you what, what you got? Talk to me though. But I feel like this is a big game for Cam. In my opinion, this is a huge game for Cam. This is the time that Cam he get to beat the uh, beat the young guy pretty much. Bring his prowess back. I feel like Cam has been treated so dirty by the league to be a former MVP. Is on, and just for him to be so naturally gifted, I feel like everybody's sleeping on him. I feel like this is his revenge season. He's got the he in the perfect spot to do it. He under the best coach. Um, shoot, my predictions. For, I think the Pats are gonna beat him just off the strength of Belichick. Mm-hmm. I think the Pats. Okay, got that's him. what I was looking for. What's yeah. the score? Let me see. Uh, you think you know, we got time for you to be thinking. Swifty, yeah. give me, yeah. we'll come back to you, Rico. Uh, Swifty, give me, give me your thoughts on the game and what's, your, what's the final score? Who wins? Patriots figured something out last week. They rushed for 258 yards. You know how you stop Patrick Mahomes? It ain't no fancy blitzes and zone defenses. Keep his ass off the field. <laughs> yeah. Run the ball. Yeah. The Patriots figured that out last week. I think they do that again. And I think the Patriots win 28-24 because, not because Mahomes has a bad game, they simply just keep him off the field by running the ball. I like it. Jump in there, Tom. What you got? got? I got the Chiefs, man. I don't think the Patriots have enough. I don't think they can put up enough points. I mean, they'll play from the 20 to the 20, but that red zone, they scared of that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're gonna put up enough points, man. I don't think I Cam gonna play great, I think. Um, but I think the, the Chiefs, the Chiefs offense is gonna be too powerful for them. They're gonna put up too many points. It's, I think the score will be yeah. 35 to 17. Oh Okay. I'm gonna jump in there, then I'm gonna play. Cam, Cam my favorite quarterback, by the way. Cam my favorite QB. But I mean you can't you can't have but the respect, Cam. And to see him with this thing, the only problem is is that you gotta have weapons. Right. You know, to go up against that team. And they don't have a lot of weapons. I mean, who's really scared of Edelman and the kill Harry? And, and you know some of the guys that they got on the team, and it always seems like I don't know how, but Cam always ends up in a situation where he's got to do a lot. He's got to carry the load on offense, and some kind of way, the lo and behold, even with the Patriots, he's kind of in a Carolina Panthers type of situation where he's got to carry a lot of weight on his offense. So, uh, and, and the way that Kansas City defense plays, they're saying if they step out and play like they play last guy, I don't see a lot of teams that I'll be in Kansas City this year because that defense was incredible. So yeah, I'm gonna go say. Chiefs. I just put it out, pal. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Chiefs 32, uh, and I'm gonna go 20 uh, for the for the pick. Rico, let's get back to you, man. Who did you have? What was the score on that? I think the Patriots gonna win 30, <laughs> 36, 36, 21. You still thinking? <laughs> 36, 21, Patriots. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I'm 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 counting on like you like. What did Cam do on the sideline? She just fell out the screen. <laughs> but he was like, he looked at him, he was like, oh, no. Like, what you talk- like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think this is his revenge season. I think people been sleeping on him for the past, how long has it been? Two, three years. I, I hope he gets revenge, man, but I don't think this is the game for it. <laughs> I, I just thought it was you know, over 21 points. The 21 of us got me. You think the Chiefs just go score 21? I think he marked this game on his calendar. It's the game that he's looking to play right now. I think he was looking to put himself on the map. And you know how he is. He likes to show out. So He real extra. I'll give you that. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody know that. It kind of definitely is. Okay. So... We got three for the Chiefs, one for the Pets. Mark it up, write it up in the books. We're going to click the books. And I'm going to keep you all honest, man, because I'm, I, I keep records for this stuff. All right? When we talk like this, I'm going to make sure that y'all know yeah, that yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep records of this just to make sure. 
Uh, real quick, y'all know it won't be right for me to talk about the Cowboys for a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, I was uh, sitting up with Nephew, who was watching the game, and I just said they get him out. And I knew what was going to happen. Uh, Dallas said, let the game get away from him. And one thing I really didn't like saying Dallas, I know y'all seen it. Y'all seen uh, Tristan Hill um, do the gator roll on uh, Carlson's knee. And we were looking at like, oh, no, nah, that's a dirty hit, man. He, he gator rolled the dude's uh, leg. Yeah. And that's just bear calm. When you play like that, like bear calm when it comes to your team, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they ain't teaching anything out there, but come on, dog. You know what we do? We're doing that kind of stuff. But Russell Wilson is who we thought he was. Cowboys are one and two. We get Cowboys update. We boy those. But anyway, that's how I said, it, man. Any thoughts on that? I thought a, I thought a fan with a losing record said something. Uh Wow. Mr. Bear. Then I get one of these numbers posed on you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. Oh. Bear is feeling himself right now. All right. <laughs> hey, Swifty, I, I get like that, man. I all right. Like I feel that. you. Okay. okay. I, all right. I get like that. I might have to go pick out my Super Bowl outfit in another week or two. All right. You see that all the business with money bag in the first place. I, I thought you said that wasn't real rap, all that stuff right there. That wasn't the real rap. Now, now, you, now you put my boy money bag. Ain't that you really just know that. I got you, bro. I got you on that one. All right, that's it. That's it for Dallas, man. We're we going to move that situation right on out of here. I'm going to keep it on my calendar. <laughs>